What is going on, guys? JD from New York. WWE Off The Script. Episode number three. News and rumors for your week ending March 9th, 2014. Before I begin, it was a hectic week in WWE. Hectic. Everything surrounding CM Punk's possible return on Monday Night Raw. I will have news on that in just a little bit. It's going to lead this week's top stories. But before I get into this week's news and rumors, guys, first of all, this news and rumors is brought to you by Guinness, JD's favorite beer, or one of his favorite beers. Pop open a nice cold beverage and join me for news and rumors. Let me take a sip of this. Fucking delicious. I absolutely love Guinness. I could drink it all day long if I wanted to. And no, I'm not an alcoholic. Second of all, fuck those other guys. Fuck those other guys, okay? This right here, this is your number one source for all your WWE needs right here on YouTube.com. All right. WWE News and Rumors, guys. We're going to start off with CM Punk. Big, big, big news about CM Punk. Was he supposed to be on Monday Night Raw? I got all the information regarding Dave Meltzer and the inadvertent leak that he had right before Monday Night Raw. According to F4W Online, Dave Meltzer said last week that one of his sources, which was a top WWE superstar, claimed 100% that CM Punk would be at Monday Night Raw in Chicago. Meltzer himself sounded unsure that Punk would be there. When Punk did not show up on Raw, Meltzer said his source told him after Raw, I was lied to. The early word is that Paul Heyman changed the promo somewhat from the originally planned promo that he was supposed to go out there and say. It wasn't like Heyman went into business for himself, but he was said that he was re he was said or it was said that he was reportedly a bit different or the script was a bit different from what was originally penned. CM Punk was not at this week's Chicago Raw and was not in the script that they wanted to go on air with. One person in WWE Creative said that on Friday, Punk wasn't even discussed but did not rule out a surprise return. Most people within WWE didn't know Punk would not be appearing for sure until Monday afternoon. There was never a script written that included Punk in any way beyond the few mentions that were made on Monday Night Raw. There were going to be other mentions uh, by who we don't know, but those were nixed from the script. I do believe that Bad News Barrett was supposed to be in a segment talking about CM Punk and letting the entire Chicago crowd know that he had some bad news, which would have been hilarious, but they, they actually scrapped that from the original script. I don't know why. I think that would have gone over so well for Bad News Barrett, but they nixed that from the script. Monday Night Raw opened the way it did because WWE officials felt that, they, that if they ignored the Punk situation, especially with the Chicago crowd, the chance would become more powerful as the show went on. The feeling was that if they addressed it at the beginning of the show, the crowd would settle down some as the show went on. With WWE making the decision to pull CM Punk from all marketing materials for future events, the big issue now is how they deal with Punk being a part of several upcoming projects, including the Flintstones movie and a Camp WWE online cartoon that is planned. Part of the reason why WWE kept Sin Cara around with Hunico under the mask is because he was in the upcoming Scooby-Doo movie and they didn't want it to seem dated. If CM Punk doesn't return, which he's not expected to, it will be interesting to see how WWE handles his inclusion in these projects that are already planned. Going into Monday's Raw from Chicago, there have been hardly any real discussions between CM Punk and WWE officials. Now, Figure 4 Online noted that there's a feeling within WWE that he's done with wrestling. 
It was made clear on Monday that Punk was not coming to, to Monday Night Raw. And it was made clear that as far as he's concerned, he is done with pro wrestling. Whether that means he's done for now, for a year, or until his WWE contract expires, nobody knows. And if they're close to Punk, they don't know what he's planning for the future. He is not talking. That's the news on CM Punk, folks. Listen. I made a behind-the-mic episode of CM Punk. I give you my thoughts on the entire CM Punk situation. My feelings about this CM Punk situation right now have somewhat changed. When Punk left, I was with him. Okay, I agreed. I, I, I thought this was going to blow over. I thought Vince was going to get what he wanted. I thought Vince was going to persuade CM Punk to come back. Obviously, that has not happened Punk made the choice, and this is what Justin Labar said this weekend, Punk made the choice not to come back in Chicago on Monday Night Raw for the WWE. It was his choice, and his choice alone. If he wanted to come back, Monday would have been the absolute perfect time. Now that he made the choice not to come back, he is not going to be factored into WrestleMania plans. It is done. I don't think we'll be seeing Punk for the remainder of the year. I think Punk is done. I don't think he's coming back. And now, my issue with Punk is that he's letting the fans down. He's going into business for himself. I was with him as he walked out because I thought this would blow over and turn into a storyline and then lead into something in WrestleMania. Obviously, that is not. He made the choice to sit out. He's not with the company anymore. More than likely, he is finished. And right now, I don't really care if CM Punk is on TV. I, I really don't. Do I want to see Punk on TV? Yes. Do I still love CM Punk? Without question. Is CM Punk one of the greatest ever? Yes. Just because of who he is and what he's done and the accolades he has accomplished in WWE from where he started to where he ended, he is definitely one of the all-time greats. No question. Now, I don't like that Punk is doing what he's doing. It, it feels to me that he's going into business for himself. Okay, it's all about CM Punk. You know, I don't really care about CM Punk anymore. It's all about Daniel Bryan. This is the opportunity now. You got to look at it this way. This is the opportunity now for others to step up, grab that fucking brass ring, and just break through that fucking ceiling. That's all they got to do. You got guys like Cesaro. You got guys like Roman Reigns that are going to be pushed to the moon. You got Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose. Cesaro. You got the guys in NXT. You know, what do they think seeing this? Look at that, CM Punk is gone. There's a fucking open roster spot. The guys on the roster right now, CM Punk is gone. He was one of the top three guys in the company. You know, if I was below CM Punk, if I was working my way up, that's an opportunity to go out on TV and impress the fuck out of everybody that's watching in the back. This is an opportunity for several guys. And one man in particular, that is Daniel Bryan. Okay, Daniel Bryan has the opportunity to take CM Punk's spot and just fucking go with it. And I will talk about Daniel Bryan in a little bit because I have news on a possible WrestleMania change. But as of CM Punk, I am not missing CM Punk right now. Yes, the product would be better. Who knows if it may be better. The product's been stale even with Punk there. But Punk is visibly absent on WWE TV. You can tell it's not the same. You can tell it's not the same, but I'm going to be honest with you, and I've been honest with you ever since I started doing this shit. I'm not missing Punk right now. I'm not. I was over it. I, I fucking, you know, with, I talked about it. I was with him. I'm still with him to a degree. But right now, you know, I, I really don't care. I, I, I honestly don't care. If Punk wants to come back, if I was Vince, I would leave the door wide open for him. You know, Punk, you know, the only one thinking right now... What's best for Punk is CM Punk. You know, only CM Punk knows if he's hurt. Only CM Punk knows if he's just done with wrestling. Only CM Punk knows if he's just burned out from the bullshit and the politics. He hasn't talked to anybody because he cannot say a goddamn thing about the WWE. He cannot say one fucking word because he's still under contract until July. Once his contract is done and that's it, He's a free man, he can say whatever the fuck he wants. But even then, I would not say anything negative about the WWE. Because realistically, CM Punk 
you know, he's making millions. He's making millions off WWE regarding merchandise and whatever his contract is. He is comfortably set right now with money. But obviously, you know, just like the world of professional wrestling, we've never seen the last of anybody. They're always revolving doors that, you know, he'll, he'll be back eventually. You don't want to burn your bridges if you see CM Punk. You don't even want to have your contract done and then say, you know what? Fuck the WWE. They did this wrong. I'm going to bash the fuck out of it. Why would you want to do that? Where else are you going to go? You're not going to Ring of Honor. You're not going to TNA. Because the money is not there. It boils down to fucking money. Money is an important factor of why these guys do what they do. You know, Punk may be, you know what? WrestleMania isn't for me this year. I don't want to match with Triple H. It's just not for me. I don't like the way things are going. I don't like the way things are being booked. Yes, you want to look good on TV, you know, but part of it comes down to money. You know, I, I've read reports that Punk wasn't compensated the way he wants. You know, we don't know what's going on. Everything right now, take it with a grain of salt. I'm here to give you my fucking opinion on this shit. The only one who knows what's going on right now is Punk. We won't know until his contract is up, and then he can talk. You know, th th there may be a spot for him on WrestleMania. He may show up at WrestleMania. We don't know. We don't know, but right now, I'm giving you my honest opinion. I just don't care about this CM Punk situation anymore. I'm tired of hearing it. I just am. Punk is gone. Get it through your skulls. If he wanted to show up on Monday Night Raw in Chicago, in his hometown, it was up to him. He made the choice not to. That speaks volumes to me. If he didn't want to show up in front of 20,000 people in Chicago on Monday Night Raw, on live TV, when he knows everyone is watching, he doesn't want to come back. He's unhappy, he's either burned out, hurt, he's just unhappy overall, and that's it. Punk is done. So you guys ask me about Punk, it's done. I don't want to talk about it no more. If there's news on Punk, obviously I will report and give you my opinion on it, but as of right now, Punk is done. That's it. It appears WWE is strongly considering adding a third person to the Batista vs. Randy Orton match for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania 30. I wonder who that could be. The latest internal lineup says Batista versus Orton versus question mark. Other matches that have been pitched but not decided on include Big E versus Dean Ambrose to unify the IC and United States titles, Luke Harper and Eric Rowan versus Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns, Sheamus versus Christian, Cody Rhodes versus Goldust, and some kind of NXT match on the main card. Now, that is, that's what's being planned internally for WrestleMania. And for WrestleMania 30, this appears to me to be a B-level fucking pay-per-view. You got WrestleMania 30, and this is what the WWE is giving us internally as a card. I don't care what is on the fucking card. The only thing that I want, and again, Justin Labar of WrestleZone.com said it today. The WWE only has two options to go for the WrestleMania 30 main event. You're not going to have Batista versus Orton, heel versus heel. He wrote an article and he said it beautifully as always. Vince McMahon likes to send the crowd home happy at the end of WrestleMania. Unless you are going to put Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker to close that main event, if you're still going to have Batista versus Orton, that's the only way right now that I see that the WWE can go. Because I don't see I don't see them doing Triple H versus Daniel Bryan to close the main event. I think that's how fucked up they are. Okay? If they are going to book Daniel Bryan versus Triple H, obviously they want to send the crowd home happy and have Daniel Bryan be Triple H and get his revenge. That doesn't sit well with me. That doesn't speak WrestleMania main event to me. Neither does Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker. Yes, it's great, but it just doesn't signify sending, you know, the crowd home happy for WrestleMania. You know, th 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 there needs to be something more. Unless they involve Sting in somehow, in some way. Unless they involve Sting, then I can see that as a main event. Sting makes an appearance. Sting stares down The Undertaker. There's some kind of video package where he interferes at the end of the match. Something along those lines. You know, but those two matches, the way they are right now, I don't see that ending WrestleMania. If you send Daniel Bryan into the main event at WrestleMania and have him win the WWE Championship, that's the way you close WrestleMania. Get him in there somehow, some way, you know. Bret Hart did it at WrestleMania 10. He fought Owen Hart in one of 
the greatest fucking matches ever. Ever. And then he went on to beat Yokozuna for the WWF title at WrestleMania 10 in Madison Square Garden. Daniel Bryan can wrestle two times in one night. If you want to open the card up with Triple H versus Daniel Bryan and have Daniel Bryan win, great. Do it that way. Do it the same way you did Brett versus Owen. Brett versus Owen opened up WrestleMania 10. Have him go on to win the title at the end of the show. But you got to set it up somehow. You got to set it up between now and WrestleMania. Somehow on Monday Night Raw, he gains a title shot. He gains the or or if he beats Triple H in, in the in the opening match, then he gets a title shot. Then he gets to work his way into the main event and make it a three way at WrestleMania. I don't I don't understand how WWE is going to work this, but all I, all I know is that they have to send the crowd home, crowd home happy with eighty thousand people chanting yes. That's the only fucking way. You're not going to end WrestleMania with Batista versus Randy Orton. You just not. You you just not. Triple H versus Daniel Bryan is not going to close WrestleMania, even though I think it could. It's just not going to be enough. Undertaker versus Brock Lesnar, again, it could, but we know The Undertaker's going to win anyway. That's not going to be the big pop at WrestleMania that we all want. It's all predictable. It's just not enough. Daniel Bryan needs to win the WWE Championship. It's got to happen. And for you Daniel Bryan naysayers out there and you Daniel Bryan haters, get used to it. Daniel Bryan is on a collision course with the WWE Championship. If the WWE doesn't give him the championship, I don't think they should be fucking on TV. I really don't think they should be scripting shows. I don't think they should be, uh, you know, in in the wrestling business, in in the, in the profession of wrestling. You know, you know, it, it's just, it, it's just mind-boggling to me how he's already not in the main event. You know, what, what's all this running around, through, go, going through circles? You know, it's it's just bullshit to me. Uh, but that's what has to happen. Daniel Bryan needs to close out WrestleMania. That's the only option that they have. They have no other option right now. Their backs are against the wall, and Bryan needs to be the WWE Champion leaving WrestleMania. That, that's that's it. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I've said it so many times, week after week, and I'm still waiting for WWE to pull the trigger on that, and it still hasn't happened. Hopefully, within the next four weeks, we got 30 days from fucking WrestleMania. Something's got to happen. Something's got to happen. According to BW Insider, there was a Bad News Barrett segment considered, I just mentioned this before, for this past Monday's Raw from Chicago, where Barrett would have informed the fans that uh, CM Punk wasn't there. WWE decided not to go with this angle because Vince still doesn't want to bury Punk publicly. Vince still hopes that Punk will get his head straight and come back to the WWE. Punk moves a lot of merchandise and WWE wants, him, uh, wants to have some kind of relationship with him because they've invested a lot of time and money into Punk and his licensing. It is said that Punk has some leverage right now because of his relationship with Vince McMahon, but as Triple H gains more power, things could change for Punk as far as how easy it is for him to come back whenever he wants. Exactly what I just mentioned. Don't burn your bridges. Come back now and stay back. Don't do anything, don't do anything stupid because, like the report says, when Triple H starts gaining more power, Triple H is... I see Triple H being worse than Vince McMahon. Really. Triple H may have a younger mind for the business. He may be more in tune with what the audience wants right now. But if you get on his bad side, just ask Cassius Ono. Just ask the American Wolves. You know, just ask uh, all these other guys that tried out for NXT and they got dropped. Just ask them. You don't want to get on Triple H's bad side from the reports that I read about some certain people. So if CM Punk wants to come back, do it now with Vince. Don't burn your bridges because once Vince is gone, like the report says, Triple H is going to be one massive fucking headache. What else do I got here? For what it's worth, it's said that WWE and their current plans have John Cena and Daniel Bryan being pushed as the number one and number two guys in the company after WrestleMania 30. Now that CM Punk is gone. No word yet if this means Daniel Bryan is winning the WWE Championship. Well, you know, all signs are leading to Daniel Bryan being one of the top guys. So I don't see why they wouldn't give him the belt. I, I really don't. This report says that John Cena and Daniel Bryan are going to be number one and two. I do see Cena and Daniel Bryan feuding once again. I think, like I said numerous times, that should have been the main event for WrestleMania. I think Cena, Bryan, WWE Championship, under under the fucking the, the WrestleMania logo, 80,000 people. That would have been a great passing of the torch. Daniel Bryan becomes the number one face, wins the WWE Championship, beats the number one guy, and sends the crowd home happy. That's the way I would have booked it, but I'm not WWE creative. 
And uh, like I said, hopefully WWE Creative knows what they're doing and gets Brian into the main event. After the injury angle on Monday's Raw and selling the injury at Thursday's NXT arrival event, John Cena wrestled Randy Orton in a steel cage main event at a WWE live event last week in North Charleston, South Carolina. Orton ended up getting the win by escaping the cage. Cena had his left knee taped up and sold the injury for most of the match. After the match was over, Cena cut a promo and apologized for a weak performance. He added that the injury he suffered on Raw was actually a severe groin injury, and Cena closed by saying he's definitely in a lot of pain and should be resting. Let me tell you something. This is all an angle. Cena's not hurt. If you have a severe groin injury, a pulled groin, there is no way you are getting in a steel cage with Randy Orton less than one week after you got injured on Monday Night Raw. It's all part of a storyline. For you guys uh, out there who are John Cena fans, he's not hurt. It's all an angle to set up his feud with Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania 30. And uh, like I said, if you're going to get into a steel cage with Randy Orton less than a week after being injured by the Wyatt family, there's no way you're hurt. There's no way you're hurt. I don't give a fuck who you are. You're sitting out. You're not wrestling. You're resting up until WrestleMania. And that's that. Seen his angle right now. That's exactly what it is. It's all an angle with the Wyatt family. He is not hurt. There are conflicting reports, though, on John Cena's health and whether, he or, not, whether or not he is really suffering from a groin tear. Um, PW Insider has noted that Cena was indeed suffering from a groin tear that happened in the angle on Monday's Raw. This is what they said, okay, with the Wyatt family. Their report stated that while the knee injury angle was planned, Cena still suffered a groin tear. Cena mentioned a groin tear to the fans after Friday night's live event in Charleston, South Carolina. Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer reports that there is no real injury to Cena, okay, with his groin or his knee. Meltzer reports that Cena is just selling the beat down from Raw, and there was no suggestion from doctors that Cena shouldn't work this weekend's live events. There you go. A segment was scripted into Monday's Raw from Green Bay, uh, that would have seen, or a couple weeks back from Green Bay, that would have seen Batista turn heel, but it was pushed back to Tuesday's SmackDown tapings and toned down a bit. The original plan was for Randy Orton to come out and talk about how the fans boo Batista and like him uh, more than they do Batista. That and a loss to Alberto Del Rio was supposed to be the breaking point for Batista to go ape shit and turn on the fans and turn heel. The idea was that Orton unleashed the animal. The decision was made to tone down the segment for Raw. Even before he actually turned on SmackDown, the idea was to do a few segments and matches over the next week to build uh, up Batista's heel turn. But they went ahead with the plans, uh, uh, you know, way ahead of plan. Because, you know, obviously the crowd turned on him before that. They, they, turned on, they turned on him at the Royal Rumble. So obviously WWE needed to fucking accelerate this. And uh, they turned him on Monday Night Raw. Whatever, Batista works better as a heel. He should have came in as a heel. He should have never won the Royal Rumble. I'm not going to repeat it over and over again. But Batista works as a heel right now. They turned him heel, Randy Orton's heel. You're not going to close WrestleMania with that heel versus heel. You're just not doing it. Not something people want to see. It's not exciting. It's not interesting. I, I don't see the match lasting more than 15 minutes. It, it's just not going to grasp the aura that is WrestleMania. But Batista's heel, great. Okay. Randy Orton's a heel. We'll see where they go from there. Figure 4 Online confirms that they're, uh, uh, they confirm what has been speculated for a while now that WWE officials have at least considered doing a three way, a three way match with the Shield members, Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose, and Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. As noted this week, Rollins and Reigns versus Eric Rowan and Luke Harper plus Big E versus Ambrose in a title unification has also been pitched. Also, Cesaro versus Jack Swagger is being teased for WrestleMania 30. That end up that could end up being a three-way between Big E, uh, Cesaro, and Swagger for the IC strap. So WWE has a a few roads that could go down. We still don't know what's concrete right now. Everything I'm doing and saying to you guys right now is just strictly rumor. Um, I do see them going with Cesaro, Swagger, and Big E for the IC strap. That seems to be like what they're building up on TV, that all three members are going to be involved in the IC title. But I would also like, I would also like a unification at some point because, you know, to be perfectly honest, the, the US title is just a prop. It's nothing special. The prestige is gone. Ambrose doesn't defend it. It hasn't been defended on TV for weeks. So, I mean, unify it, boom, have one mid-card belt. It would make the chase for the IC strap a little bit more pre prestigious. Uh, you know, more guys have uh, a fighting chance to work their way up. You know, it, it's it, it just about bringing prestige back to the IC strap. I hate seeing the IC strap lose so much credibility. You know, when I was younger, 
I, I wanted the IC title more than the WWE Championship. I, I, I always envisioned myself with the IC title. You had guys like Hart, Shawn Michaels, Mr. Perfect, Ravishing Rick Rude, the Ultimate Warrior, hold that belt. That was once the belt to have. You know, and then obviously when you're the IC title holder, that makes you number one contender for the WWE Championship. That's the way it should be. You know, that's the way it should be. It needs to be brought up to prominence again. WWE failed in that in that uh, aspect, and uh, like I said, I hope that this year we see more mid card titles. You know, being defended and you know bringing some prestige back to those titles because it certainly deserves it. I hate to see the IC title just suffer like this, but. I think they are going to go with Cesaro, Swagger, and Big E. That's the way I see it on TV. But things could change. We will find out what happens uh, with the weeks to come. The Undertaker was not on Monday Night Raw from Chicago, even though he was advertised. Um, WWE was still advertising Taker to appear as of the weekend. So it must have been a last-minute change. There was a version of the Raw script that had a stare-down between Taker and Brock Lesnar. WWE champ, uh, Divas Champion AJ Lee was at Raw, but obviously not used. No official word yet on why she didn't work uh, the show, but it could have been because WWE was trying to keep the chance down for her boyfriend, CM Punk, which is understandable. WWE NXT talents were told at a recent set of TV tapings that NXT uh, would be pushed more significantly now that the WWE network is up. The talents were told that the company wants to get behind NXT as a pure wrestling product within the WWE. They were also told that while some may be brought up like Emma, it's going to be a slow process and for everyone to be patient with the idea that the network um, is still growing and they'll all be getting lots of exposure even without a call up. I, I watched NXT last night. Great show. You had, um, uh, who was on the show? You had uh, Emma versus uh, Ric Flair's daughter Charlotte. You had, um, what the fuck is his name? Uh, Leo Kruger. Uh, he debuted as Adam Rose in this little fucking party gimmick he had. Uh, he had a stare down between... Uh, Sami Zayn and uh, Alex Cross, I believe his name is. Uh, you had um, Alexander Rusev cut another promo. He's uh, feuding with uh, Conse Consequences Creed, or what's his name now? Fuck, I fucking forgot his name. Uh, the fucking idiot that's coming out with... Uh, I'm drawing a blank. Uh, Brodus Clay's theme music. Uh, I forgot his name because that's how irrelevant he is. I don't fucking care. Um, but NXT, but NXT is, uh, is a solid product. Uh, I do plan on watching it every week. I'm not going to review it every week because there really isn't no solid storylines, um, on NXT right now. It's just simply about the wrestling and see, uh, and to see who's down there and growing and, you know, to see who has the potential to be on the main roster in WWE. But it is an enter entertaining one hour of program. Um, and I would advise you guys, if you have the network, watch it Thursday night at, uh, I believe it's at, uh, nine o'clock. And I will be reviewing the network um, very soon on Behind the Mic to give you a full rundown of how it works and, you know, my uh, my opinions on it and how I've felt about it since uh, since ordering it. It's going to be a good episode, so look out for that pretty soon. Dolph Ziggler says that WWE edited out fan chants for him during his interactions with Batista uh, a couple weeks back on SmackDown. He tweeted, kudos to WWE for editing out the We Want Ziggler chants face-to-face -face with Dave Batista. I will never forget that night, and thank you, Milwaukee. Hashtag SmackDown. It only would have helped the show and made the match that much better. At WWE, hashtag SmackDown. Keep doing, doing your thing at WWE Universe. That was fucked up. WWE's fucking retarded. That's all I have to say about that. Uh, why, would you, why would you edit out We Want Ziggler chants? Batista's a heel. Obviously, they don't want to see Batista. Obviously, nobody wants to, you know, likes Batista. They want to see Ziggler. They want to cheer for Ziggler. Why would you edit that out? The crowd chance and crowd interaction only make the match better. You know, so I don't understand why they would edit that out. WWE's fucking retarded. Finally, guys, uh, a quick tidbit, fun fact. Buff Bagwell, ex-WCW, ex-NWO employee. Bagwell is now working as an escort for CowboysForAngels.com, which partners with Showtime, the, the cable TV, uh, you know, the cable uh, channel on TV. Bagwell's rates are 800 for two hours, 1550 for four hours, 3000 for overnight, $4,500 per day, 8000 for a weekend trip, and 25000 for a whole week of his services. So if you guys want Buff Bagwell as a uh, escort for your entertainment uh, purposes, those are his going rates. 
cowboysforangels.com. I thought that was a fun fact. I figured I'd share that with all of you. But that, that ends uh, this week's news and rumors, guys. I'm sorry I struggled at the end there. I don't know if I'm getting sick or not, but this fucking, uh, the cold weather's just beating me to fuck, you know, beating me up. It's, you know, my work sucks. You know, I, I'm fucking exhausted, mentally drained. You know, I, you know, I really didn't even want to do this tonight. I was actually going to do it, uh, tomorrow morning before I went to work, but, you know, it, it's just, uh, one of those things, you know, you sit down here for 30 minutes and you struggle through it because you're just so fucking tired. I don't want to let you guys down. Uh, you know, WWE news and rumors every week you guys expect it, so I try my best, you know, but I am fucking exhausted. I may take a little bit, you know, of time away, you know, because, uh, you know, I, I, like I said, I am going to Atlantic City. Uh, I'm going to take some time away from just doing videos and go down and hang out with my friends down in Jersey. Um, but I'm going to plan on, you know, filling you guys in on what's going on then. Just may take a little bit of time away from this because, you know, I got a lot more, you know, people coming at me when you're doing this, when you're doing that. And, you know, you guys better be, got to be patient with me. You know, just be patient. Things are coming. Good things are happening here. So just be patient with me. I'm thankful for all the support, but... You know, some people out there, they want something like that, you know, just take it easy, things are coming, I got behind the mic coming, I got, you know, Wrestlemania coming up, I got, you know, obviously news and rumors every week, Monday Night Raw review, you guys are asking me to do Smackdown and NXT, I got so many fucking requests for Smackdown, easy, you know, easy, you, you guys are lucky I sit here for 30 minutes a week and talk to you guys about wrestling, I love interacting with you guys, but some of you guys gotta tone it down a little bit, alright, but that's the news and rumors guys. I'm going to enjoy this Guinness, and I'm going to play some fucking Call of Duty and get upset even more. I'm going to relax for my, for my uh, Friday night. You guys will be seeing this on Saturday morning. So until next week, guys, Monday Night Raw Review, and um, news and rumors next week, guys. I'll talk to you guys, uh, I'll talk to you guys soon, all right? Take care.